What's up everybody, it's Sean here, here today to give you guys my review of the Palace Skateboards collaboration with New Balance on the 580 in this gargoyle colorway. Today's video as always is brought to you by Heffalux. Heffalux is my all time favorite sneaker insoles and they sell ETP windsoles, which really is the same material you'll find inside Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushion setup you're looking for, you're going to find there's a suitable pair for anyone. So I've been a paying customer of Heffalux for years now, and I honestly find them to be extremely comfortable. So if you guys want to check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and get 15% off your entire purchase. So this is a collaboration between Palace Skateboards and New Balance, releasing alongside this pair, which I reviewed on my channel as well. Both of these pairs released first on Palace's website on September 23rd for 160 US dollars each, which is roughly 220 Canadian dollars. So this colorway that I'm reviewing right now, this is the Gargoyle colorway, but the official colorway is Gargoyle and Lapis Blue. And the style code for this shoe is MT580PA2. And really, if you guys have already seen my review of the other colorway, for the most part, this video will be identical, so no worries at all if you want to just skip through to the end. But for anyone watching this review, like I said in that other video, I'm really happy that New Balance is bringing back the 580 model. One of my favorite 580 collabs of all time is the collaboration with West New York City. And in many ways, this colorway kind of reminds me of that pair, minus the hits of purple. And I think this colorway was the more popular of the two, which makes sense considering it's much more of a conservative colorway, and it pays homage to more of those classic gray tones in New Balance's history. So just like the other pair, this comes in that same gray-based cardboard box. We have this large Palace logo on the very top, along with the Palace wordmark on the side, and then on the other side, we have the New Balance logo. As for the shoe itself, so taking a deep dive into the details, on the toe box, we have this light gray colored mesh, but towards the edges, we have these reflective 3M layers, which is done in this lapis blue color. But in real life, this lapis blue is more of a turquoise or almost a green shade. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this very hairy, grey coloured suede, and I don't know if it's just a quality control issue, but the dark grey suede that they used, it was a bit more scuffed and it felt a little bit flatter compared to the dark turquoise suede used on the other colorway. Moving downwards, covering the mid panel, we have this light grey coloured suede, which is done in that same long haired or hairy style, and the top two eyelets are done in this lapis blue coloured TPU. Stitched on top of the mid panel, we have this dark grey New Balance end logo, which is also done in suede, and we have this reflective 3M layer underneath. Surrounding the bottom of the mid panel, we have a medium grey coloured suede, and above this, we have this turquoise coloured TPU overlay, which gives you additional structure and support for the sides of the shoe. Next to this, we have more of that mesh that we saw earlier on the toe box, and then surrounding the bottom of the heel, we have this dark grey suede, with palettes branding debossed across, and the top of the heel is covered in this light grey suede, which is again done in that shaggy long haired style, and we have New Balance branding embroidered across. Attached to the laces, we have this rubber dubre or lace lock, which is done in this turquoise color with palace branding found across in white. And then as for the laces, these come with two different lace options. The standard or default lace is a medium grey colored flat lace with hits of turquoise found throughout, but they also give you a plain style lighter grey lace if you prefer more of a subtle look. Underneath this, we have a mesh tongue, but the top of the tongue is covered in a hairy suede, and we have a nylon tag on the top with New Balance 580 and Palace code branding. And just like the other pair, the tongue also features a hidden stash pocket as well, which opens and closes using a zipper. The insole on this pair is just your standard foam line insole. We have the Palace logo found throughout the top liner, and we have New Balance and Palace code branding stamped on the heel in white. So the upper of the 580 sits atop this very chunky midsole, which is constructed out of a combination of New Balance's C-cap and Absorb technologies. The forefoot area is done in this off-white tone, but the back three-fourths of the midsole is done in the speckled grey-coloured finish. And visible on both the lateral and the medial sides of the heel, the midsole also incorporates New Balance's roll bar technology, which is essentially a TPU wedge which cuts across the heel and this helps with people that over or under pronate, giving you this added layer of stiffness and support to really help stabilize your heel. And then as we turn the shoe over to the bottom, so the outsole here is entirely constructed out of a gray colored rubber. We have New Balance branding towards the heel, and we have these two cutouts on the medial side, 
revealing what looks like a carbon fiber plate, which is probably there to give you additional support and structure. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about sizing, this fits exactly like the other colorway. So for both pairs, I went a half size down to a nine and a half. So I'm a true size 10 slightly on the wider side, but I wear a nine and a half in a lot of New Balance silhouettes. For example, the 992, the 990 V3, V4, V5, and a lot of my 550s too. And in comparison, I stick true to size or a size 10 in other New Balance silhouettes like the 997, the 990 V2 because I find both those models usually have a bit more of a narrow toe box. And other models that I stick true to size in are of course the 2002R and a lot of the made in UK models like the 991, the 1500 and the 1530. Moving on to the comfort, so this shoe is comfortable but there's definitely more comfortable New Balance silhouettes out there. And the reason why I say that is because although the forefoot area feels decently soft, you can feel some of that squishiness of the midsole underfoot. My biggest issue is the stiffness of the heel. So because the midsole incorporates roll bar technology, in my opinion at least, it makes the midsole feel much stiffer. So it's basically a plastic wedge that's underneath your heel. And while I understand it's supposed to be there to give you more stability, because of that you're sacrificing cushioning and comfort. But that's not to say this shoe is uncomfortable by any means. For just everyday casual use, it's going to be perfectly fine. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship. So first off, this pair is made in China and the quality of the materials was decent. However, I don't know if it's limited to my pair, but I felt like this dark gray suede that they utilize on this shoe, it felt a little bit scratchier and not as soft compared to the rest of the suede used on this shoe. In comparison to the other colorway of this Palace collaboration, I thought that all the suede used on that pair was very solid, whereas this one I was slightly disappointed with the dark gray suede. And from an overall build and craftsmanship standpoint, one of my shoes came pre-creased out of the box. And that's probably just an issue of how the shoe was stored when it came from the factory. But it definitely was noticeable and hopefully it's just limited to my pair and not a widespread issue. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. So it makes sense why this colorway was the more well-liked one of the two. This one is the more conservative colorway, with this being just various tones of grey with a small accent of turquoise. It's no question that this one is the more wearable of the two. But the gap between the two isn't quite as large as what I originally thought it'd be. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this gargoyle colorway and this collaboration between Palace and New Balance. Of the two colorways that dropped, which of the two do you guys prefer? And for anyone watching, did you grab any of the pairs in this collaboration or did you just pass on them all together? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check me out on Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.